All right, the Scary Perez podcast is back, and we have a really special one today. Um, I, I think uh, this is going to be for fans of this podcast who are, who are used to seeing you know football and basketball. A lot of the episodes. This is a great one because we're going to have some uh, Wisconsin soccer content on. And that's going to be really fun for us to take a peek inside one of the Wisconsin programs that doesn't get featured on here as often as it should. Anyway, I'm your host, Gary Alvarez, Wine Island Enjoyer, Sherry Wine Destroyer, Jake's Grandpa, and Cindy's Plus One when you'll have me. And uh, today we are excited to welcome uh, the first two Badger soccer guests in the history of the program, Ella Adi and Alyssa Mart. Did, how badly did I, did I butcher those names? He just told me off screen. He told me... Uh, I mean, did, we're doing okay. Yeah, it's Arissa, but yeah, <laughs> it's close. No, I, I said Arissa. Oh God, hold on. I, and it's even written here. I can, <laughs> I can show you. Well, you can't see my face, but it's it's written correctly. So anyway, we won't edit that out. My other Wisconsin Badger grandson slash researcher Joe Ferguson did did the did the notes for this, so it's all on him. But anyway, <laughs> appreciate you. Anyway, we'll get we'll get started. So let's let's start out, and Arissa, you can you can start us off by you know introducing yourselves and uh, telling my audience a, a few things about you and your your athletics background that we should know before we get started. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my name's Arissa. Um, I'm currently a senior at Wisconsin, um, and I actually transferred from University of San Diego after my sophomore year. So this is like going into my third semester at Wisconsin. Hold on a second. You, you moved from, from San Diego to Wisconsin and Wisconsin. I, I know you're from Wisconsin originally, but yeah. what, what is, I, I hate to interrupt, but not really. Um, how has the transition gone for the winter? So you just, you you, know, you were used to it as a kid or how does that, how does that difference yeah. go for you? Um, well, I, was in Wisconsin until my junior year of high school. And then I moved to Arizona for my senior year and then went to San Diego from that and then back to Wisconsin. So definitely was a shock, but I did, I knew what I was expecting, but um, the, I don't really love it, <laughs> but yeah. Appreciate the honesty. Some <laughs> of the kids come on here. Yeah. You know, we had the, we had the freshman basketball kids on a while back and they, I was trying to get a similar vibe. And then I realized as I'm asking the question, what is for Michigan? One is from Wisconsin and the other one's in Indiana. I'm like, this, you know, what's what's it been like moving to this horrible, you know, climate in Madison? I didn't get quite the quite the response <laughs> we thought. But anyway, I interrupted you. I apologize. Please continue giving us the background on your soccer stuff. No, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically for college soccer, I was there for in San Diego for two years and then here. This is my second year here. Um uh besides that, I grew up playing soccer. Um obviously in Wisconsin and like through clubs, but I also played um, overseas a lot because I lived in Singapore for a couple of years. So then we did a lot of like traveling with that team, but yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. I spent a lot of time overseas too. Um, I hang with the DJs in Europe when they're doing their, you know, rest in peace of Vici and some of these other cats. We can get into that a little later. Uh, Ella, what, uh, what, what give us your soccer story and uh, you know what brought you to Madison? Yeah, so I'm initially from Toronto, Canada. Um, I always wanted to go play in the NCAA, so that was kind of my goal growing up playing soccer. And um, yeah, Wisconsin was ultimately the place I chose. Um, the great coaches, the great environment, and just the amazing soccer here really drew me, um, as well as the school. So that's kind of how I ended up here. Uh, I've been playing since I was about four years old, and I've gotten to play for Canadian youth teams, um, U17 and U20, which has been really fun. That's very cool, and I, I have to ask this. There, there's a time in every young Canadian athlete's life when, when they have to make a decision. There's a fork in that road, and I'm sure a lot of that is, is towards hockey. How, how did you, you end up picking soccer as your primary sport? Yeah, soccer, I played a lot of different, different sports when I was younger, um, but soccer was always kind of my number one. My mom's side of the family was really big, so I always knew that soccer was what I was going to pursue going forward. Gotcha. That makes sense. Well, obviously, you're, you, I suspect you're very happy with your decision because it's worked out really well for you. Yes, definitely. That's cool. So this is for, for both of you. And I guess, you know, Ellie, you can, you can answer first. But obviously, you know this. Y'all are having a really, really good season right now. Um, by my calculations, a half game out of first place in the Big Ten. 
uh, number 16 in the country, and you all just had a massive road win over Penn State, who I think was number two or three at the time. Um, you know, give my audience your thoughts on the 2023 season so far and what the team's goals are going forward. Yeah, it's been really exciting. Um, we knew coming into the season that we had a really strong group and um, that we were going to do well. So I think we like to just take it game by game, and we've been able to get a lot of good results. So moving forward into Big Ten tournament and fingers crossed NCAA, um, we're just looking to keep doing that, taking it game by game and keep keep winning and getting those results. Gotcha. And Arissa, what, what can you add to that? Yeah, I think Ella said it perfectly. Um, it really is game by game. And um, I think something from being here last season is we faced a lot of struggles and adversity last season. And so we kind of came into this season with the saying, we're like, leave nothing to chance. And so I think we're just trying to take control of everything we can do and just go at it day by day. Okay. So, so I mean, and obviously there are going to be a few comparisons I make to football, but last season, I think it's fair to say, didn't go, didn't go as you y'all would have well, obviously LA, you're, you're a freshman, but uh, you know, how Alyssa, how Arissa, how you wanted to, to do this. What, what do you think the change between the, 2021-22 season and 2022 or, or 23 season, I guess you you know, don't go over the, the year. But what 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 flipped the switch for this team? Um, I think it just became a lot more apparent that it's like I think last year it was really it came down to like one game that we lost, and that kind of changed the entire season and like not making the NCAA's. So I think this year it's like even the smallest games like matter. So like games like months ago like have a huge impact in how like successful we are now and so i think a lot of people who were here last season kind of knew that and it kind of like was incorporated into the culture of the team for this season gotcha that makes sense and ella i i presume that you were you know watching the wisconsin 2022 team pretty pretty closely knowing you'd be coming in uh you, you know obviously they recruited you but part of this is a two-way process where you sell yourself. You know, what, did, what did you? What do you bring? I know you play defense. What, what do you bring to this twenty-three Badger team? I'm not saying they didn't have last year, but that's that that kind of sets you apart from other players. Um, I'd say my ability to be able to attack and defend is something I've really been working on playing as an, a fullback, um, and I think Paul has really helped me as well with that defensive side of things because I was always stronger in the attack, but. Um, yeah, just being able to kind of do both and just be that like adaptable outside back that the team needs. Gotcha. And Arissa, you you're I do know you're listed as midfield and and also forward. But game by game, what do you not only prefer but what do you tend to play more often? More of a striker is like how does that work? Yeah, um, it's kind of hard to explain. I think when especially with Emma J back on the field. Um, kind of play as like two forwards but I'm technically like a midfielder but I just kind of stay a little bit higher um it just happens naturally especially because me and Emma are like very interchangeable so kind of a bit of both <laughs> okay we're, we're getting there I appreciate that so what I, I guess I have, a, I have a football mind what football position would be most analogous to what you play is it like a receiver or running back Quarterback, I, I just, I'm trying to help my audience as well as myself yeah. fully understand what what you know what you're bringing. Oh, that's hard. Um, I'm like not great with football either, but I, I would say like a running back. <laughs> okay, so you have you, yeah. yeah, no, I think I think that makes sense based on the, the highly package I've watched, and you 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 have the ball a lot in scoring position, and you know you you're definitely I believe the second leading scorer in, in goals for the team this season. Um, so you're you're a, you're an attacker though. I mean that's that's fair to say you're an offensive player. Yeah, for sure. El okay, Ella, this is a, 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 the same question to you. It's tricky, and I'm not I'm not suggesting that either of you have to be big football fans, but it is what it is. I am what I am. So I'm trying to I'm trying to give my audience an analogy. So someone who plays, I believe you, it's obviously a defensive position, but you described it as you have some offensive element to your game. So like a ball hawking quarterback, cornerback or linebacker where you have a primary defense responsibility, but can do things that, that can give the ball back to the offense. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm not like Rissa. I'm not very well versed in football positions, but that sounds about right. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Um, and I'm, I'm getting better at the soccer stuff. Um, so, and Ella, since you, since you live in, in, 
uh, the United States now in, in Madison. Um, what, what was it like to have to completely abandon your, your loyalty to the Canadian national team and become a big U.S. women's national team fan? How did that go? Um, still kind of a work in progress. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting because I came around the time of the Women's World Cup. So everybody was cheering for the U.S. team, and I was kind of the odd one out on that. But can't say that I'm 100% a USA soccer fan yet. Okay. And now, uh, since we're doing this, that wasn't their best work, as I understand it, in 2022. That wasn't the U.S. <laughs> but there was a player on the team who I think should have played a lot more than she did named Rose Lavelle. And I know you all know what Rose is all about. Uh, have you all had the opportunity, and for my audience, Rose is a, a former superstar for the Wisconsin Badgers uh, before she pursued the U.S. national team stuff. Uh, have you all ever had a chance to, to meet with Rose, or, or is there any sort of, you know, does she dip back in with the program and give, give speeches, or how does that work? Um, I personally haven't really spoken to her directly, but I know, like, Paula likes to bring her up now and then. Um, she stays like super active and like watches our games and everything. I know Paula said she might come to our game on Sunday, so she might make an appearance. Yeah. So what I think I hear you saying is not that you need anyone to help this team. This team is doing great, has been great all season. But if there were another a, a new a new walk-on player named Rose Rochelle, who just happened a new number sixty-eight or number sixty-five or something with, with do you, do you see, is, there, is there a way that that could happen where she could just kind of get in there and maybe pop six, seven goals for y'all and then and then maybe take the next train out of town? Is that is that realistic or is that is that would that be too obvious? Uh, that might be a little bit too obvious, but we could try it. <laughs> okay. That's good. I love I love to put my guests in uncomfortable situations. So I appreciate mm -hmm. it. But no, I, but in all seriousness though, in you know, while I'm not a soccer savant, it has been a lot of fun watching Rose have such success, not only at the college level, but at the international level, and it's a, it's a great testament. It's kind of like football players watching T.J. Watt on Sundays, uh, current Badgers. It's it's got to be fun to see someone who has gone through the program and is having such success. Yeah, for sure. I think it's just a testament to what Paula can do and how she can help you through this process. She's had multiple players through this program um, turn professionals. I think a lot of us are kind of hoping that's the pathway we take, and Paula is very good at assisting through that. Gotcha. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to turn back to Paula and give you guys a couple fun questions related to coach uh, before we, and by the way, just so you know, you, you two are my primary emissaries for getting coach Wilkins on, on the, on the program. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure this is, it would be the fulfillment of a lifelong dream for coach to get on here, but we'll see how this goes, but it would be fun to have her. Um, so all Badger sports teams, football, basketball, and, and, and hockey and others have, rough workouts that kind of bring them all together, whether it's preseason or in season. Um, you, I know the basketball team has something called the Hill. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. I, mean, I presume that we know what, you know what we're talking about. Is there, is there something in the Wisconsin soccer preseason uh, stuff that y'all do that brings y'all together as a team like the Hill, like some incredibly difficult kind of bonding moment that, that is just very difficult, but is something that ends up being a unifying thing. Um, this isn't like specifically for Wisconsin, but I think, um, preseason wise, there is just, we're running continuous like fitness packets and stuff. Um, I think the beep test is one that like, I feel like every soccer player goes through, but I think it's something that like you as a team have like a standard and like everyone has to meet it. Um, so I think hey, what's, what's the beep? What's the beep test? I, I, I've heard of it. I'm some trivial pursuit or something, but I, I've never actually run through it. By the way, before you tell me that, I want to make sure you're talking to someone who is in absolute peak physical shape, has a 38 inch vertical. I run a four, four, three. Um, so, so I totally understand if you guys are talking about peak, peak physical stuff, I'm with you, but I don't know some of the terms. So please explain that to, to me and my audience. Um, basically it is, set up with cones that are, I think it's, it ends up being like 21 yards or something apart. Um, and you're listening to this like video audio thing and it beeps and every time it beeps, you have to sprint and touch the line and come back. And that'll be like one level and then over time, like it speeds up. So then we need to reach 40 on the beep test. Um, 
so yeah, you're just basically running back and forth until you reach 40. And it sounds super easy, but it's really like, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> I think actually, I'll, I'll say this, it sounds actually super difficult for people who are not elite athletes like we are. But Ella, what was that like having that kind of, I, I'm, I'm sure in junior soccer and things like that, I mean, high school soccer, you, you did have things like that, but, but coming to a college program and then having these really difficult things with high standards, these, for, these performance things, what's that, what's that been like? Um, well, I actually didn't have to do the beat test this year. I came in a little bit late because of some visa things, because um, I'm from Canada. Oh, I see how you did that. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. You're smart. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it worked. I thought I assumed I was going to be doing it about the week after I came, but it just kind of got lost. <laughs> Arissa, do you get graded on the beep test? Is it like is it like A, B, C, D, or is it just you have to hit 40 and like it's either a pass fail? Um, it's it's pretty much pass bill. I think like there's obviously exceptions. Like if you have injuries and stuff like that, like you could run different, there's like alternative tests, but pretty much on that day, I think it's August 1st, you run the beep test and okay. everyone's expected to get 40. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I, Ella, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to misrepresent what you're stating, but I think you, you just said on November 1st, you want to do that beep test and, <laughs> and see so you can, you can pound out a 45 or 50 and just see how it goes and kind of just show what show that you got that is that am i accurately am i, am I picking up on that or might i miss that one i don't know about november 1st but in the spring it's definitely going to be in our future okay fair enough and do y'all ever train with the men's program the men's soccer program do you guys have like similar training or they do different they do different stuff i know it's different teams obviously but i just w wonder if that's a if there's a like a m common mindset for soccer um We've never trained with them. Um, I'm sure like some of the drills and like stuff is similar, but uh, I'm actually not really sure what they do. Gotcha. So obviously, right? Boy, I shouldn't say obviously. I presume y'all love watching soccer matches and you probably get out to the men's games. What other Wisconsin sports uh, do you like to, to be, you know, just regular fans of over the course of the year? Definitely men's soccer. Um, I'd say volleyball. The volleyball games are always really fun to watch. And hockey, basketball. Football games are fun to watch, but we're not always allowed to go to them because it's in season and it's the day before our game. So Paula doesn't always let us go. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. And your next game, I believe it, it – well, actually, tell me, when is your next your next match? We play Sunday. Sunday. Ah, okay. So a night, a, a home night game at Camp Randall against uh, the number three ranked Ohio Buckeyes might not be in your in your uh, plans for this weekend, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> you guys think Wisconsin can pull that off? Yep. <laughs> can I <always> hope? <laughs> <laughs> have you hooked up to a lot of technicals. Let me actually, tell you something. Let me... <laughs> I don't know about football, so I actually have no idea. <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll take that as yes. Um, I, 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 I've been the only, you know, my brand is very strong. My millions of listeners, the only uh, dominant Wisconsin sports personalities that I, that I'm aware of that has predicted a Wisconsin win over Ohio state this weekend. So either I'm going to be the toast of the town or the complete idiot who completely missed the mark, but that's okay. So we're going to miss this one, but we'll get you another, we'll get you out to another game this, this, this year. Um, and, and uh, Ella, what, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, the odds are definitely not in our favor, but, I mean, we beat Penn State, and nobody thought we were going to win, so you never know. Well, let me tell you something, Ella. Between the three of us, I always believed that you beat Penn State. So here we go. Um, and, and do you, Ella, do you get, what, what, uh, what, if any, matches do you get out to for other sports? Pardon me? What, what if any, matches do you get out to for other sports? Um... We go to a lot of soccer games um, and volleyball games mostly, I'd say. Yeah, volleyball. I ha had a couple of volleyballers on, CC and, and uh, Devin, and they, they just, you know, they I learned a lot about their game of volleyball. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a fan of the team, but just watching them describe it, that has become a complete phenomenon uh, with some of their success, and obviously they're just such fun games to watch. What what can we do? And you guys have loyal fans too with the soccer program. But what can we do to take? I mean, winning obviously takes care of a lot of it, but to, to take Wisconsin soccer and get it to that next level with with the fans, I, I because the games are super fun and super competitive. I happen to be a soccer fan, 
but you know, y'all have any ideas to to sort of bring some more of these more of these students in to to the tent you guys have? Yeah, I mean, I think just exposure and like awareness. I don't really know how exactly, but I think like sometimes people are like shocked to find out we have a soccer team, <laughs> and I always think that's, that's funny, that's, but. That's yeah. crazy because it's super fun, and by the same reasons why the U.S. women's national team is so popular. I understand you, you all are not the women's national team, but it's the same kind of stuff. It's the same kind of game. Um, you know, it just seems like a natural to me for for students. El, you got thoughts on that? I'm not sure how popular you know women's soccer is up in Canada. If you've gone to a university up there, but what do you what are your thoughts for bringing more Badgers Badger uh, students into the fold? Yeah, I think just broadcasting the game more on. Um, social media, stuff like that, um, where more students would get to see where, first of all, where it is, because a lot of people don't know where our game field is, and also just like when, I think a lot of people would be willing to come, it's more that, that they don't really know much about it, so yeah, just more information, I'd say. So it's one of those things where it just needs a little momentum, and obviously winning, doing things like beating the number two team in the country on the road, that is a huge deal, That is a, that's kind of, you know, the soccer equivalent of the football team beating Ohio State. I mean, that's a that's a big deal, and that's that's a big bump. So it's just a case of, of trying to get more kids, uh, you know, on, on campus and more not just kids, but you know, adult fans uh, who are not students to those games. And I'll certainly do whatever I can to try and try and hype that up. I know, obviously, appearing on this podcast is a huge first step to to, to bringing in the average Wisconsin fan. I know I know that when when the kids are in Og Hall and they just you know have the studies are done, they can't wait to but but to put the, the, the Scary Elvers podcast on and get that going. So we'll, we'll see what we can do there to run, to run those kids up. Um, Madison is a beautiful city, obviously, with, with endless numbers of cool things to experience. What do you do, do for the other five months of the year? Oh, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, that's, that's really hard. I think if you just – I like to stay inside. I'm not a big – Cold weather person, so yeah, I'm usually inside. <laughs> okay, well, there, there. I'm told there are things that Wisconsin students can do indoors uh, on State Street and things like that that are sometimes <laughs> enjoyable. Not not just the elite athletes that play for the soccer team, but that sometimes that's fun. I know some of the other kids have had on to express that. Ella, yeah. is, is Madison warmer than your hometown, or is it similar or colder? I would say that the summers are hotter, but the winter the winters are also colder. So it's kind of the extremes. Okay. And I, I don't need a, a final answer here, Ella, but based on what you've experienced so far, it, it, is Madison the kind of place you could see yourself living, or, you know, down the road, depending on what happens with soccer, uh, just as, as an adult, or you, you want to get back to Canada? Or you just not, not sure? Um, I think it's hard to say. See where soccer and career stuff takes me, but Madison's a beautiful city, and I've definitely enjoyed my time here so far, so wouldn't be opposed Awesome. To. We'd love to see that. Well, here's, here's a game we like to play on the Scary Alvarez podcast. It's a word association game. So I'm going to say a word or words or, in most cases, a name. Hopefully I won't butcher the pronunciation of one of these names I'm going to be saying too much. And I want you all to, to tell my audience the first thing that comes to mind. If it's funny and awkward and ridiculous, that's totally okay. It doesn't have to be, but it, it's totally okay. Okay. And we kind of t- we heard this before, but uh, Rose Lavelle. Soccer. <laughs> Ella, you can, you can too. I mean, we'll just go kind of one after the other. Ella, you hear Lorraine and Rose Lavelle. What's the first thing that pops into your mind? USA. Okay. My answer is Scary Alvarez because I'm a, <laughs> I, have a, I have a tremendous ego. Um, Coach Wilkins. Dedicated. <laughs> I was going to say well, funny. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to step on your toes there. Arissa, what did you say? Funny. Funny? Okay. Oh, I like that. When, I'm definitely going to have her on. And Ella, what did you say? Dedicated. Okay. Having a, a combination of being funny and dedicated, those are two awesome things to have in a, in a coach for sure. Um, the Big Ten Soccer Tournament. A win. <laughs> what do you got, Ella? What's that? I didn't hear you. Intense. Intense. And to, to set this up for the for the fans watching, I believe, unless I've misread your schedule, that is the next 
uh, match y'all are going to have is going to be against Rutgers in the Big Ten Soccer Tournament. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. What can you tell us about Rutgers? Not a, not a one word answer. Just like a, <laughs> I'm doing a derivative from the from the exercise here. Uh, you guys, I'm sure, have scouted them, and, and Coach Wilkins has scouted them. What what do we know about the about the Scarlet Knights? Um, I think that from what I know, like they're a very talented team. They have very talented players. Um, they kind of play similar soccer to us, so it should kind of it should be an interesting game on Sunday. And when you say similar soccer, is is that an attacking style? Yeah, I would just say like with pressing and attacking and stuff like that. Gotcha. It sounds like it's more fun for the fans to see that to see that kind of yeah. that kind of thing. Two teams. And Ella, what what do you what was what's your perception of the Scarlet Knights based on what you know? Yeah, we haven't played them yet in the regular season, um, but it'll be a competitive game for sure, especially in a game like that Big Ten tournament, the first round. Everybody wants to win, so it's going to be really competitive. Gotcha. And remind me where that is being held this year. The, the game here. Yeah. It's in, it's in Madison. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's a good thing. Okay, so we're going to get – I'm telling you, all the fans who listen to this, we're going to get you all out to this this – Wisconsin Rutgers Scarlet Knights matchup in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten tournament, and then of course, hopefully, if, if things go the way I want to, you know, right down to semifinals, finals, and, and hopefully a title. So that'll be really exciting. I'm glad, I'm glad we got to talk about that. Um, here, here's the part where the name may be pronounced incorrectly, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. Emma Jaskinek. How did I do? That was good. <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay, yeah. fantastic. You said goals. Yeah. Okay, Ella. Finisher. Gotcha. She, I've seen in the games I've seen, she is definitely a big time goal scorer. And, and Arissa, you're you're a big time goal scorer in your own right. But it's got to be fun to be playing with someone else up top, like you know Emma, who can who can finish on the regular and give you all leads. I mean, is that is that cool playing with her? Yeah, it's amazing. She brings such a good energy. Gotcha. And, and I, I don't want to say she's the Wisconsin soccer, Jake Ferguson. I'm not sure if you know who Jake is. He's my grandson for the Badgers, but she brings a lot of those same qualities. Uh, you know, Jake was a guy who would get a catch every game and was a real, real leader on the, on the, on the offense. And they uh, got a lot more goals because of him. Our goals. Listen, look, look at me. I'm already becoming a <laughs> soccer fan. This is, this is insane. Touchdowns as some are calling them. That's good. So that's, that's exciting. And, and Emma remind me, she is a, a redshirt senior this season. Yes. Okay. Will she get a COVID year, or is, is she going to go pro, or what do we know about her? Well, I know this is her fifth year, so I think she. this is like her. She's taking her COVID year right now, and then okay. I'm not really sure what her plans are after, but I feel like she definitely could play after if she wanted to. What it, whatever that is, it's going to involve scoring a lot of goals, I think. <laughs> it's just because it's, 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 it's wild stuff. Um, do you all have nicknames? College soccer nicknames, and if so, will you will you tell them to me and my fans? Like our names. So watch <laughs> nicknames. Yeah, your names. We'll get to we'll get to the other stuff. But what, what do you have a nickname like? You know, Golden Boot or something or something something cool. I don't. I don't think I have a nickname. I know Ashley on our team. We call her Smashley. Um. I don't know. Do we do nicknames? That's kind of it, really. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, here's here's the here's your homework. Okay. Um, between now and your Big Ten tournament opener against uh, Rutgers, I'd like you all to come up with nicknames for each other. So I'm going to tag you all. You guys, I don't think you're big Twitter folks, but that's where this airs, and also on, on Spotify. But we're going to get we're going to get some good Wisconsin Badger soccer nicknames in. Um, do you have a nickname for your coach? P Dog. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, P Dog. That's 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 a that's a fun one. We can have fun with that one. Uh, Ellen is P Dog. I presume that's for Paula. Yeah, I can't say that I've ever referred to her as P Dog, but I've heard it been, been thrown around. Well, before. here's here's the great thing. You have an upper class person here in Orissa. You have the dawn of Wisconsin sports, Scary Alvarez. You have our permission to call Coach Wilkins P Dog next time you see her. So. <laughs> You just you just use that get out of jail free card if you need it. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I meant to ask this earlier. And who is Wisconsin soccer's biggest rival? Um, I think it kind of depends. I know we have like in-state, like non-conference, um, like Milwaukee, Marquette, and then obviously we have like the border battle with Minnesota. 
But I think, I feel like this year it was really like Penn State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's that partially, I presume, has to do with the fact that they were really, really like kind of kind of buttoned up against number one in the country this season. And that's so it's, it's that much more intensity to play a rival of that quality. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's your favorite places, each of you, and, and Ellie, you can start with this one, favorite places to eat on the Wisconsin campus? I'm trying to get you guys an NIL deal. Um, well, back when we had Red Card, I really enjoyed going to Forage. I'd say that was somewhere that I really liked. That's kind of specific to Madison. It's not really much of a chain. Oh, no, it doesn't need to be a chain. No, no, no. In fact, it's even better probably if it isn't a chain. Okay, so Forage it was called? Yes. That sounds salad-y. I'm not sure if that's going to be my kind of place. I'm more of a meat guy, but that's that's all right. Um, and and Arissa, what what would you say? Um, I would say Sweet Green. I know they just opened on State Street, but I've been going there a lot. <laughs> okay, boy, I'm getting really different answers uh, from y'all on this than was from the football team and basketball team. That, that's okay though. That think that's it. Sounds like you're eating healthier, which I think <laughs> is in, in the long term probably a, a good thing. Um, so we're going to, we're going to get rolling here pretty quick. Tell me one really cool thing about the 2023 Wisconsin soccer team that very few people know. Arissa, I'll start with you. And then Ella, you can have some time to think about your answer. Kind of like we're on family feud. Oh, one really cool thing. That's so hard. I feel like there's so much to this team. Um, I just feel like this is compared to last year. I mean, I don't really have that much experience but um sure. this year i think there's just so much depth to this team that like we've faced so many adversities this year but it's like you can't really tell because we have such like a deep bench and like everyone's just so invested that like nothing can really affect how we play gotcha so there's a lot of team cohesion and you have what sort of uh the intangibles are there this yeah. year okay ella what do you think yeah, I would say the culture on the team is really um, it's really unique, and it helps kind of create a bond between us. Off the field, I'd say that no, like regardless of what class, senior, junior, like everybody gets along, talks to each other, and we're all just really close friends, I'd say. So that's really special. Okay, so there's like a, a good degree of team cohesion, because oftentimes that is highly correlated with, with success on the, on the soccer field. Yeah. Y- y'all call it a pitch or y'all call it a field? Call it a field. <laughs> okay. I feel like calling it a pitch is that, like, 35-year-old U.S. men's national team guy who grew up playing, foot, like, football or basketball, and they're, they're just trying to sound cool. I'm not – it's fine. If you call it a pitch, I'm not saying you're a bad person. It's just I feel like there's a certain type of soccer fan that uh, – American soccer fan that, that, that calls it that. I call it a field. I'm comfortable calling it a field. Because it makes me, you know, it harkens back to football and things like that. But, but you know, it's fine. If someone on your team calls it a pitch or, or Coach Wilkins calls it a pitch, I, don't, don't get me in trouble. Trouble. No. <laughs> awesome. Well, we just we're having so much fun. We already hit the thirty-three minute mark, which means we're we're winding down here. But I want to thank both of you so much for appearing on the Scary Alvarez podcast. Uh, I know it was an honor of a lifetime for for both of you. I know it often is for the the guests I have on, but. I wish you both incredible luck and success in the Big Ten tournament and beyond this year. And uh, it's really been cool watching you all have have this great season in 2023. And uh, don't be a stranger. Maybe we'll get Coach Wilkins on, and, and maybe you can have you come back on after you win the national title this year. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you having us. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Have a great weekend, and, and good luck in that first game against Penn State. Yeah, thank you.